Hello and welcome. This is Cheryl A. Major with ThinStrongHealthy.com. And I want to welcome you to today's podcast edition of Thin Strong Healthy and Major Health Tips in Digestible Bites. And today, I want to talk to you about soda. So many of us drink a lot of soda. And we want to explore a little bit about why that's not in your best interest today and also talk about some ways you might uh, modify your behavior around soda. So um, it's known by different names. It's known as soda. It's known as soda pop. It's known in the New England area as tonic. And I have to say my mom, who was from New Jersey, could never get used to the fact that New Englanders called it tonic. I think we kind of seem to be back to calling it soda these days, regular soda, diet soda, um, all that kind of thing. But let's first talk a little bit about sugar relative to uh, soda. And, you know, we come out of the womb with a taste for soda, (laughs) a taste for soda, a taste for sugar. It takes three or four months to develop a, a, a taste for salt. But sugar, we want it right away. And um, early man had tongue receptors that could taste sugar, but we have so much sugar in all of our food. Our, our, we have hidden sugar in the processed foods that we get used to tolerating more and more and more sugar all the time. Um, back in the 17th century, sugar wasn't readily available, and actually diabetes, was called, which was called having the sugar, That was a disease of the wealthy because the poorer people couldn't afford sugar. My, how times have changed. Um, Sugar is still killing us, and we need to adjust our behavior to avoid being killed by sugar. And so many other things these days, but uh, today we're talking about sugar. So today, our sugar consumption per year is way, way up compared to what it used to be. Back in the 17th century, which I mentioned before, maybe seven-ish pounds of sugar per year. Now, today, in 2021, our sugar consumption per person is about 125 pounds of sugar per person per year. So that is an astoundingly large amount of sugar that we're um, eating. So many of us have turned to artificial sweeteners to try to get away from the sugar, especially if you're diabetic or you're pre-diabetic or you're trying not to gain the extra pounds that sugar puts on you. We have turned to artificial sweeteners. Now, they may be approved by the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, but the down and dirty truth is that to your body, artificial sweeteners are even sweeter than sugar than regular plain old sugar. Artificial sweeteners are even sweeter. And another really dangerous thing is that artificial sweeteners do not need to be be digested. I mean, at least sugar needs to be digested, which slows down um, the assimilation, the the, the processing of it in your body. Artificial sweeteners go straight through to your liver. And from there, they go to fat cells. So if you're trying to uh, keep your sugar down, keep your weight down, and you're out doing the drive-thru and you're ordering a burger and a fry, an order of burger and fries and a diet soda, trying to keep that fat content down, keep that weight gain thing from happening, unfortunately, it's not going to work for you because the artificial sweeteners still make you gain weight. And because your body perceives them as even sweeter than sugar, they make us crave sugar even more. Um, And they can also slow down your metabolism. Artificial sweeteners can slow down your metabolism. And if you're prone to depression, as I was prone for so many years, decades actually, um, if you're prone to depression, just a serving or two of an artificial sweetener can trigger a bout of depression. So if you're trying to keep your metabolism up there and if you're trying to avoid um, mood swings and being depressed, you need to ditch uh, the artificial sweeteners. They are not in your best interest uh, to be eating. And as I mentioned, um, they, they, they cause us to crave even more sweet. And uh, that cycle of craving, of uh, eating something sweet, 
and then craving more sweet that makes us able to tolerate more and more sweet and it makes us uh, crave it even even more now what's the process of the um, the craving well sugar triggers the release of dopamine in our brains and dopamine is that feel-good chemical it's the happy chemical and it also helps us relieve pain as well as it's a mood elevator so if you have sugar and you feel good that lasts a short amount of time you're gonna crash and your body's gonna trigger you to eat more sugar um, there are a whole other re a bunch of reasons why you're going to uh, want to eat more sugar or just eat more food. That's a topic for another day. For for today, we just want to talk about that sugar high. When you get that reward, you're going to want it again and again and again. So uh, the more you the more sugar you get, the more you want until you start craving it all the time. Um, not unlike a drug addict, because sugar actually is a drug. They have done uh, they've done uh, studies with with rats, and the rat rats are sm they're very smart animals, and if they give them a pile of cocaine, and they give them a pile of sugar, the rats will choose the sugar every single time every single time so we need to uh, be aware of the sugar that we're eating in general and the sugar today in sodas and I'm going to pick on classic coke today for our subject um, and a 12 ounce cla uh, 12 ounce can of classic coke that is a serving of coke if you look at your uh, ingredient label your nutrition label on the back of the can 12 ounces one can is uh, a serving and by the way the smaller cans that they have you know they're so duplicitous and they trick us and they're so sneaky and they're very very bright but they say there's less sugar in a small smaller can of di of of coke and that's true because there's less of it if you do the math there's actually a little more sugar per ounce in the smaller can of coke than there is in the regular size can of coke so don't be fooled. The only thing that you're eating less of is the can is smaller. It's not that you're getting less sugar per serving. So a serving in that one can is 39 grams of sugar, 39 grams of sugar. And there are four grams to a teaspoon of sugar. So when you drink that can of uh, classic Coke, you are drinking nine and three quarter teaspoons of sugar. And if you have more than one, I mean, I know people who go through a six pack of Coke or Pepsi a day. You are drinking six, what, six times nine. Six times nine, 54 is almost 60, almost, I was not a, a whiz in math, but it's almost 60 teaspoons of Coke if you're, go, of sugar if you're going through a six pack of Coke a day. So please, people, please. And that's not even talking about the calories. I don't like to count calories. It's too much work for starters. And second of all, if you're eating good whole food, you're not going to need to count calories. Your body is going to love you for giving it whole food. And you'll stop with cravings for processed food. You'll stop with cravings for sugar. And your body will find its own perfect weight. Now, not everybody's going to be twiggy. And thin people are not always healthy. So don't focus on losing weight. Don't focus on being thin. Focus on eating whole healthy food and being healthy in your body will find its own perfect weight. I promise. I absolutely promise you. So um, the recommended daily allowance of sugar for an average weight adult is about 25 grams or six teaspoons. That's for women. Uh, men, they, they'll, they crank it up a little bit to about nine teaspoons uh, recommended a day. In my estimation, that's still too much. Um, there's no benefit in sugar. There's absolutely no nutritional value. Sugar is an empty calorie. There's, there's absolutely nothing there that's going to benefit you. And keep in mind that the average American consumes more than 22 teaspoons of sugar per day. 22 teaspoons of sugar per day. So you need to be very, very careful about that. Um, and going back to artificial sweeteners for a few minutes, did you know that artificial sweeteners can actually cause 
gut and digestive problems. So if you have a can of Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi or any diet soda and it puts your stomach off, it gives you a stomach ache, um, don't ask your doctor for Prilosec, just knock off the soda, get away from the artificial sweeteners and uh, take a good probiotic and a good prebiotic and allow the balance of the gut and your bacteria to get back to being healthy and you'll find that you'll feel much better in general. Now, what do you do instead? Well, when I teach my signature program, The Anti-Diet Solution, because I don't believe in diets. Diet's a four-letter word, and the first three letters tell you what it needs to do. Diet. Diets don't work. They're not sustainable. They scream deprivation and misery. Who have you ever seen? I mean, if you've been on a diet, and most of us have, have you really been happy while you're on a diet? Probably not. Probably not. So let's find a different way. So the anti-diet solution is my signature program. And the first thing that I address with people is, what are you drinking? What are you drinking? And so many times the people who come to me are drinking a lot of soda. They're drinking a lot of energy drinks. They're drinking uh, a lot of uh, fruit juice. And fruit juice is, it's really sugar because you don't have any pulp or any of the good fiber stuff that's in real, real fruit. So when you drink fruit juice, if you have orange juice in the morning, even if it has pulp, it goes right to sugar, goes right to fat cells. So you're much better off eating half an orange sliced up than you are having that juice a glass of orange juice in the morning. And back when I became aware of all of this and I was trying to start, um, you know, being more conscious and uh, I, I switched from orange juice to grapefruit juice because I thought I was doing a good thing because grapefruit is more sour than oranges. But it turns out same thing, same thing because there's no pulp, there's no fiber in there. So get your fiber and eat a slice or two or three or four of orange or grapefruit instead of drinking the juice. So uh, back to the first time I talked to people in the anti-diet solution. Uh, in fact, I will tell you, the last time I had it was, the last time I ran the program was uh, late summer, early fall. I'll run it again in January. Um, but one of the people who was there um, said that she was drinking uh, iced tea, sweet tea. She was in the South. She was drinking sweet tea, which is uh, tea, which is a typical drink in the South, and she was drinking Pepsi. So what we did was we we got her to substitute fizzy water for the Pepsi. And if you're trying to get yourself off soda, this is what I suggest. I suggest getting carbonated water or get yourself a soda stream machine and carbonate water. Put. Uh, squeeze a piece of lime, crush some fruit up, put that in, um, have a tablespoon of an unsweetened fruit juice in there, just a little to give it a little color and a little interest and a little flavor until you get used to the water. If it's a real big turnoff for you, try doing that. And if you, if you dress it up, you'll be much more apt to enjoy it. And you know another thing? Another thing is get a glass that you love. Go to a specialty shop, go to an antique store, find a wonderful glass that looks dressy that you feel good about and special when you're drinking the water. Part of the whole food thing when you're trying to alter behaviors and move in a better direction, it's, it's a lot of food is visual because you know if something looks good, you're thinking you're probably salivating already, you're thinking, boy, that's going to really taste good. But a lot, of, a lot of changing your food habits is about changing the visual. It's about working with yourself with the visual um, tricks, deceptions, just kind of um, helping yourself change your behavior in ways that will make it a little bit easier for you. So after the first class, the second time we met, which was a couple of weeks later, I asked her how she was doing and she said, I am not having Pepsi. I am drinking water, and she said, I feel so much better, my mind is clearer, I'm sleeping better, I have more energy, and she said, I've dropped five pounds. She lost five pounds. 
So this really does work, folks. It really, really does. It's so simple that it's hard in our processed food world. So I'm trying to just give you some tips that you can hang on to here and make some changes in your behavior. And now she did say to me, now when I have a pizza, I'm probably going to have Pepsi. And, you know, that's okay. You don't have to be a saint. I, saint. I'm s- certainly not a food saint. And I'm certainly not the food police. I used to be much more... Uh, rigid than I am now because when I work with people, when I counsel people, when I teach people, I have to, we all have to be mindful that change is hard and I call it small steps for big changes. So I would rather see you make a small step in the right direction than try to do something like a diet, which is make really hard changes all at once. If you make a change one week and then you make a change another week, you push something off your plate and you replace it with something good, and you do that over a period of time, it really does add up and you can make significant changes in your life and in your health by doing just that. So ditch the soda. It's not good for you. Ditch the diet soda. It's really not good for you. Soda has tons of chemicals in it, too. Ditch the soda. Get yourself some fizzy water or plain water, and you can infuse that, too. You know, I was in Portugal a few years ago, and um, we were hiking in this really hot, it was, I can't remember exactly where it was, but they had kind of this little oasis with um, a, a bar where you could get, you know, drinks or you could get water or something like that. And they had this beautiful infused water with cucumber and cucumber and rosemary cucumber and rosemary and it was delicious and it was beautiful so infuse water you know just grind up some pomegranate seeds and put those in pomegranates are really good for you too and they're very festive this time of year so make a nice holiday presentation with your water and make it special for yourself get that special glass put some fun stuff in there and try ditching the soda and drinking water I think you'll be amazed at the difference it will make in how you feel, how you sleep, how much energy you have, and I know it will make a difference in your weight too. So ditch the soda, and that's why. I want to thank you for joining me today. This is Cheryl A. Major with ThinStrongHealthy.com, and with major health health ti- major health tips. I can say that with major health tips in digestible bites. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.